Welcome to Design Your Life in Business, the podcast for leaders by Bright Mind Consulting Group. We give you the necessary tools to help you become the architect of not just your business, but your life too. I'm your host, Javon Wooden. Hey, Tony, how are you? Hi, Javon. I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm doing well. Always a pleasure to speak with you. I know you have a lot of great things going and I know you always add value when it comes to networking. So I'm ready to get going. How about you? I am ready. Always stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) There you go. As always. All right. So first question, we're going to fire off right away. We getting deep with it. Who is Tony Harris Taylor? So Tony Harris Taylor is the networking queen who owns two businesses, drastic results, marketing and sales coaching, where I help entrepreneurs, service-based entrepreneurs to get known, get connected and get paid by learning to build those key relationships that will turn their contacts into contracts. I also am a franchise owner with Network in Action Global Partners, where I bring business owners together to help them build intentional referrals, connections, and collaborations. And our goal is to help you to build business, build build relationships that last a lifetime um, so that you can stay in business. And so if I want to Put my overall mission is to help as many entrepreneurs as I can globally stay in business through relationships. I love that. And I know there's so much to unpack there, but the key is we're about to learn about networking people. Now, I know some of y'all are saying, oh, I know how to network. I know what to do. I guarantee you, Tony is about to blow your mind with some of her stuff, some of her suggestions and tips. So listen in, stay locked right here. Uh, But we're going to back up a little bit. You've been at this game for a while, Tony. How did that entrepreneurial journey start? My entrepreneurial journey started when I was 24 years old. My mother called me. I was working at an oil and gas uh, company in downtown Houston. And she said, quit your job and come work for me. And I had seen her struggle in her journey. And I was like, uh, no. (laughs) And at that time it was computer training, software training. Now you're too young to know this, but some of your listeners who are my age will remember the transition from Lotus one, two, three to Excel. Do you know what Lotus one, two, three is? See, I know only because I'm in the computer field. In the tech know. tech field, right? So, Lotus one two three to Excel, Word Perfect to Word, um, DOS to Windows. That's when I started my eyes. So, I would go into corporate training and teach them that software. You know, when I first gave my mom the no answer, she she asked me a question that lives with me to this day. She said, Tony, what's the worst that could happen? You could always go back to that job, but what if I'm right? And to this day, I still live by what's the worst that could happen? When I'm getting ready to get drastic, what's the worst that could happen? Right? And so, um, and she started me on my journey and it's evolved. I've spent 12, 14 years in financial services, 12 of those years as a financial advisor. I have five series license, insurance license without a without a college degree, high school diploma, black woman in a white man's world. And it was all relationships that moved me through the ranks to get promoted to management. I ended up managing the peers that I was in business uh, with. And um, then I decided to go out on my own in 2012. And when I went out on my own 2013, I started working with small businesses and I was a top five sales rep for constant contact in the world. And um, it it was an affiliate relationship. I was still my own business owner, but that's what whet my appetite for helping small businesses to grow. And at that time, I entered college. Well, right before then, I entered college and got my degree as in entrepreneurship. And um, now I have a master's degree. So I went from high school diploma, making $200,000 to getting the degree 
Um, and now I get to live the dream of helping people stay in business, learn how to build relationships because it's a skill and um, help them to grow. Yeah, you, you said a lot there, and that's super inspiring. You know, like you said, you were a woman in a man's world and you crushed it. You said 200K without the degree. So I, I can only imagine. I don't want to get in your pockets too much, but I, I can imagine what you're making right now. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun doing what I do. And yes, money comes. Let me just drop this nugget. When you get clear on what you do, your superpower, who you serve, the money follows. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when things aren't as going as well as we hope, you know, we know how entrepreneurship is. But you said the key, like, ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen? Right. I'd rather personally, I'd rather go for my goal and go for my dreams than be at a job that I hate and doing something that I just loathe, even if it is like paying the bills, because my, my personal health and and my personal wellness is, is much more important. You know, as long Absolutely. as I'm good, I got the roof over my head, some food, I know I can keep going, right? Absolutely. And you see that with, with a million entrepreneurs who, you know, were struggling at first and then, you know, they hit that goal because they kept moving and they kept asking themselves, hey, what's the worst that can happen if I invest in myself? So thank you for sharing that and reminding us, you know, as yes. we get on this journey. Um, you mentioned that relationships was the key to elevation for you. So is that what like turned the light on for you when it came to focusing on creating a networking business? So I'm going to step back in my story. And in 2005, when I got promoted to management, I started um, networking because one of my jobs was to recruit advisors. And people would say, you need to go network. And I would show up. I'd be cute. Pick out the right hair. <laughs> Always, up. always, you always fly. Right, right, right. And then I would pass out a bunch of get you get a card, you get a card, you get a card. And I go back to my office, have nice conversations, nice people. I'd wait for the phone to ring. They said they was gonna call me. I do it again. You get a card, you get a card, you get a card. I get back to my office, sit down, wait for the phone to ring. Now I could have called them, but no, they said they was gonna call me. And it never happened. And so in at that time, I met a lady who is a marketing coach like I am today. At that time, I was in financial services. And she said, you're not networking right. What do you mean? She said, you're not networking right. Pay me $6,000 and I'll teach you how to do it. Another, what's the worst that could happen? So I took the drastic step. I withdrew the money from my retirement plan and I paid the lady. And if she were to call me every year and say, Tony, you owe me another $6,000 for what I taught you, I'd pay it. You know why? What she taught me was life changing. Absolutely. I hope she ain't listening right now because she's going to call me. I know. She may call me. <laughs> she is still around because I see her on social media. So the point is this. I didn't know how to network. I was doing it wrong too. I thought because I was showing up, looking the part, connecting with people, passing out cards, I was networking. But what I find is what happens beyond the business card. And that's what I teach my clients today is how to network beyond the business card. How do you build those real relationships? Once I got it, I was already doing it. I just didn't understand that it was a skill that was transferable and that could be mastered through practice. And now Man, you, you, you got to share it now, Tony, because I know so many people when I go out and network, man, I, I don't, I don't loathe. I know my company's live not low. So I got to throw it in there, that word. Right. So I loathe walking up to someone and them saying, Hey, here's my card. Give me a call. You know, and they give me this long drawn out, I think it's supposed to be an elevator pitch, but they tell me their whole life story. Um, so how do you network properly? Please help. Okay. So first my saying is show up, be up, follow up to blow up, show up, be up, follow up to blow up. So yes, the first step is to show up. 
And I'm going to talk about both in-person and virtual networking. So now that we're back live going to in-person events, you got to be in the room where things are happening. And when you show up, you have to have the posture of what can I learn about other people? Well, who can I serve today? Who can I give to before I receive anything? Most people go to networking trying to sell. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We are not networking to sell. Listen, even if I need your widget, I'm not going to pull out my credit card at the event and give you money. But most times people don't need your widget the day they meet you. So just relax. Chill out. Or they don't even know they need it, right? They don't we even know. Them a chance. <laughs> it's 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 the beginning of building no like and trust. But trying to sell when you're networking is equivalent of going to a club and saying, you know what, let's leave this joint and go to bed. We're not doing that. Well, maybe the younger generation might, but we're not doing that. All right. Old people ain't doing that, all right? So we, it's not, networking's not a one night stand. It's not a hit it and quit it and you done, right? You got to nurture relationships. So show up and then show up in the right rooms. A lot of people don't like networking because they're showing up with the wrong people. And here's another analogy for that. The basketball wives, they not showing up where the short guys are. The everyday average guys are. They do it, right? They have a target market. <laughs> and they do the research. They figure out where the target market hangs out, who their agent is, what events they're going to, and guess what they do? They slide up in those rooms. Doing that marketing data analysis, right? <laughs> so they know who they're about to approach and they do their research. Stop showing up in the rooms where your target market isn't there, hoping to catch what you can. So people are fishing with a pole instead of a net when they are networking. So what's some ways to get that? What's some ways to do that target market research prior to attending or selecting the networking events that you want to attend? So you got to know your niche. And the best way to know your niche is to work with a coach who can help you identify your niche. OK, a lot of times we're too close to our own product to see and service to see for ourselves. So working with a coach will help you identify a solid target market. That target market has to be able to afford you and they have to be accessible. So um, working with a coach to identify your target market and both of us are those coaches who can help them with that. If you're not sure, if you're not sure and you don't not ready for a coach, who is it? I just did my recording of my digital content over the weekend and target marketing was one of it. So who is it you already have relationships with? What's your history? Maybe you worked a job in that area and then now you want to serve the people you used to work with, right? What problem have you solved for yourself? What problem have you solved for others? That's a way to narrow down your target market. But the most important one is, can they afford to pay you? And so you got to make sure that your target market is one who, if you can solve their problem, if you're the painkiller to their problem, they're willing to invest in themselves and pay you for it. Absolutely. And then when you once you do all that, you got the target market down, how you find your events? <laughs> Well, I've been networking for over 10 years, and so I'm very connected um, when it comes to events. But um, how do I find events? So here's a tip. So I was having a one-to-one -one with someone recently who does translation services, and he joined NIA. And so, and while it's great that he joined NIA, because NIA is an intentional referral group, I said, are you networking with ethnic chambers? And in Houston, we got a ton of ethnic chambers. He said, I hadn't thought about that. See, this is why you have a coach because right. why in the world are you in <laughs> outside of your area, you know? And you hadn't thought about ethnic chambers. So I um, went to AI, chat GPT, 
And I said, show me 10 ethnic organizations in Houston. Oh, Asian chamber, Hispanic chamber, black chamber, all the chambers showed up. Show me 10 more AI. Boop. So use AI to find the target audiences, find the organizations that cater to your target audience, then take the name of that group, go to Google, do a search, click on their website, click on events, see when their next lunch and dinner networking mixer is, register and show up. I got to say one more thing about showing up and then we can move on from this. Virtually, when you go to virtual networking meetings, turn the camera on. Please, please turn the camera on. It's like You are not there. Right. If it's just your picture or a name, turn the camera on or don't show up. Unless it's an education event. Now, if it's if but if it's a networking, you're supposed to be connecting with other people. Don't show up to my event with the camera off because I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you out. Right. Because when your camera is off, it's like you're not present. Right. We know nobody you're probably will, over there doing something else. <laughs> exactly. And then you, nobody will walk into an event with a bag over their head. <laughs> but right. that's the equivalent of what you're doing when you don't turn the camera on. When you're wanting to network, come on now. Yeah, no, that, that's super important because, and then you want to like put in the chat or try to reach out to people. People aren't really going to, you know, it's, you're not resonating with anyone because they don't know who you are. They can't like, even they, see your face, you know, and then have a branded background. So I have my room set up. And I'm in a physical office, so I've got my brand behind me. I've got some flowers. I've got some pictures. i got something that, and if you had a wider screen, you'd see I've got shelves with trophies on it. So when I show up and I'm dressed from the waist up, now you don't know what else is going on down below. <laughs> we don't and need to know what's going on. We don't need to know. <laughs> but the point is, I put my lashes on, I put my hair on, I put my makeup on, even for virtual situations, because first impressions still matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the subsequent ones. So even if you're a part of that group and they typically see you, make sure you're showing up representing your brand. That's that's super important. We got to realize that as the person, as the representative, especially if you're running that organization, your personal brand is that brand. People That's associate right. you. And That's sometimes, right. you know, especially if you're a culture consultant, people don't really know your your company name. They know you. Right. So they're That's not right. working with your company name. They're going for Joe. They're going for Javon. They're going for Tony. Right. So we got to remember that, you know, show up. Don't half ass it. Show up fully or you might as well not show up at all. Say it again for the people in the back of the room. Right. Don't, <laughs> don't show up at all. That's that's what I tell all my clients because I'm, they're like, why why am I not connecting with the right people? Why is this? Why is that? I'm like, well, how are you showing up? Yes, right? Right. you know, if you're just walking in a room, then you become recluse, right? No one even knows you're there. How do you yeah. expect to make any type of impression on anyone? You know, so, absolutely. So yeah, I don't want to stop your flow. You, you're giving us a nugget, so I'm gonna let you keep rolling on your. <laughs> so the second tip is to be up. Energy is everything. I am 57. I'll just say it. 57 years old. And the number one compliment I get is I love your energy. And I don't take anything for that. And so some of it might be natural, but I have to flip a switch. When I come on this call, the call before you was a little heavy for me. So I had to pause, decompress, flip a switch to get my energy ready. You know, the best example of flipping a switch is Beyonce. You ever see her in an interview? She is very low-key, demure, you know, soft-spoken. But sisters flips a switch when it's time to turn it on. And so when you are showing up and you're being up, people are attracted to you. People are attracted to me because of the way I dress. I have accessories. I have something you can say, oh, I like that necklace. You know, I, I bring attention to myself intentionally so people will want to know, well, who is that lady? 
who are you? Glasses are part of my brand. You see in the logo up there, right? It's part of their conversation piece. Hair, because every time you see me, it's going to be different hair. Never describe me by the hair, but you'd be wrong. So people know that though. And it is a, and then you also want to start a conversation using compliments. Find someone in the room that looks nice and give them a compliment. And that opens the conversation. So be up, be prepared. Yes, I still like physical business cards. I know you, I know I have digital too. You young ones like digital cards. I hate them. I hate them. <laughs> I usually bring both. Yeah, I mean, I you never both. know who wants what. Well, because a physical card, I can always sort through and say, where is that person? When I import you in my phone, I forgot who you were. So when you are networking, and if you're going to import people, you still got to somehow take a note, open your notepad and say, Javon Wooden, digital card. So I can know to go back and find him in a future time. But I know you have a tip uh, that's tied to that, right? About not even worrying about the follow-up because you want to set up. Just get ready right? to say that. So yeah. follow-up is the third piece of formula in the equation. But initially, I'm going to take follow-up off the table. You book appointments on the spot. There is nothing worse than showing up to a networking event, having great conversations, like I said at the beginning of my story, having great conversations, and then nothing happens. You go back to their your life, they go back to their life, nobody calls nobody, and then it's no, it's not productive. Nobody gets married without the first date. Nobody gets a referral or a a buyer unless they know, like, and trust you. And you have to be intentional with building no like, and trust. And to do that, you've got to go on a date. Now, sometimes dates are duds and you go on a date and it's like, I can't get that 30 back, 30 minutes back in my life ever again. But for the most part, when people are showing up to an event, they're good people and you can help them. And then in turn, they feel obligated to help. Yeah. And it may not be that first layer. That first person you meet may not be the one, right, that's going to get your product or service. But they may know somebody who knows somebody that could leverage you. And it may not be immediate, right? I've had people come back to me years later like, hey, you know, I, I remember yeah. that you did this, you know, because I'm staying yeah. in contact. I'm nurturing in the meantime. Um, and yeah. that's why when you said earlier, like, don't come in there trying to sell immediately. Right. Don't come in there with the with the idea that, you know, whoever you need to talk to needs to be your ideal client. They don't. Yeah. Right. They yeah. could be falling any level of relationship where. Right. There's yes. so many ways that someone could become valuable to your network. So I love what you're saying there, Tony. And it's all about getting on the other side of the person. So when I describe who I am and what I do in the date people will raise their hand and say, I need that. And then at that point you say, well, do I have permission to show you how I can help you? And if they don't raise their hand, you've got to be an awesome enough networker to say, "How? Who? Are, what are you working on? How can I help you? You help them. I make so many introductions. My goal is 50 introductions a month. Yes, I do. It's my business to help my clients get into my network. So well, then I would ask Javon, if we're on the first day, I'd say, well, where else do you network? And he'll tell me, can I come? Would you introduce me to the people you know? Do they have speakers at that event? I'm a speaker. I'd love to speak at that event. I ask for more than, because I can sell directly to the person, but I'm trying to get on the other side of the person by getting into their network. So can I come with? Yes, <laughs> I love right? that. And asking them to introduce you is, you know, that increases your chances of closing any other future sales and deals and getting into other networks. So you are exactly. just like a conduit, right? You connect with yes. this person and go to this person. And that's the beauty of it, right? It's like you turn yeah. that one to many. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's how your networking goes viral, which is why I named my conference the Viral Networking Conference, because it's one that leads to many, but it won't happen if you're so focused on the sale. But remember, I said I typically help people before they help me. So I met Javon in, we had to go from Houston all the way to Nashville for us to meet. <laughs> And then we met in Nashville and then we um, stayed connected. We happened to sit on the plane together. He missed his flight in 10 Missed my flight. Seconds. Talk about serendipity. <laughs> All right. And then we booked a date. We got to know each other. And I've been on his summit. I've, I've, I spent money for his VIP. He's, you know, he's interviewing me now. I interviewed him on my show. You see what's happening? And, I, and then for his, his summit, I referred him to five or six people. Several of them got on the summit. I'm trying to help him. So in turn, he feels somewhat obligated to open the door for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's how it works. It's like reciprocated, right? It's everything you do is reciprocated. People feel obligated. Even if you do the smallest things like, oh, that, you know, Tony went out the way for me. Let me make sure, you know, I do something for her. Or you're always top of mind when I have something going on. I'm going to find a way to include you, right? In, in whatever yes. I have going. So it's just, it's Absolutely. just, it just works. And then I got a question, right? The second question that's always asked, no matter what city I'm in, no matter what country I'm in, it's always, what do you do? When you go network, how do you get out of that question? Well, I don't get out of the question because I'm here to tell you what I do. <laughs> so don't shy away from the question. I wouldn't be here if I didn't want you to know what I do. But you got to have a succinct elevator pitch. And I teach elevator pitches to my clients and there's a little formula for it. Um, you, you, you can ask a question or you can just directly say, I help. Um, and so I say something like, and I change it a lot. There's like no perfect pitch for me. Um, and so, and it depends on who's in the room. So if I'm in the room of real estate agents who is a target market for me, Say, I help real estate agents take drastic steps around their networking to get known, get connected so they can get paid, stand out from a crowded space so that they can make six figures and beyond. Love it. I love it. And they're probably going to say, hey, raise my hand. You know, I, I want that or I got a group. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, I just uh, with me, I just don't I don't ask that question. That's just my, my, I love when people ask me, I just don't like asking it myself. I always find like what brought you here or, you know, what's his own genius, you know, just other ways. That's, that's just my preference. Cause sure, like, sure, what they sure. do is always thrown out there. And I'm like, man. Well, you um, want the key there, regardless of the question you ask is to get people to talk about themselves. Exactly. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. My goal is to get them to talk more than I have to talk. Right. Um, you want to be more interested than interesting. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. Say that one more time. You want to be more interested than interesting. So you want to be asking questions to learn more about who they are, what they do, and how can I help you? But at that point, I just like, you know, I'm, what are you working on? I always ask this question. What are you working on? How can I help? And I mean that. And the other question I ask when I'm in the room is, um, who would you like to meet at this event tonight? And they will tell me, I want to connect with attorneys. Well, while I'm networking, I, and I tell them, and they don't believe me because they don't know me, but I say, well, okay, I'm going to scout for you an attorney. And when I meet them, I'm going to come over and introduce you to them. And I do it all the time, blow their minds. And they're like, wow, she cared enough about me in this environment to make a connection for me. Absolutely. And that, that is going to resonate for, for a long time. Like we said, you know, lifetime value, that person skyrockets immediately right there, you know, uh -huh. even if they're not a, a direct client. Um, so you mentioned drastic a few times. Like what does drastic results, drastic action look like? Moving. Sometimes the drastic steps are small steps. You just got to keep moving, taking action. 
So the, the drastic brand came about spur of the moment. In fact, you'll re, you can uh, appreciate this. It was born at an NSA Houston meeting. Wow. Didn't know that. I'm learning something new, everyone. <laughs> yeah. It was born at an NSA Houston meeting in 20, 2009. Oh, and for, for those that don't know, NSA is National Speakers Association. Yes. So that's and that's the conference we met at. So that's why I related it to him. Karen McCullough, it, they had this get a video, 10 minute video. Um, and so I had prepared my I had, it was my first time there, but I prepared my talk and she came and she said, what's your what's your title? And she didn't know me at the time. And what's your title? And I was like, I don't have a title. She said, you got to have a title. I'm going to come back here in 10 minutes and, or a few minutes and you got to give me your title. And you got to know Karen because she's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. and I was like, and so I was at that time talking about how I had taken a drastic step to have gastric bypass surgery and how it was, you know, changed my life. But unfortunately, my first husband passed away from complications of high blood pressure and diabetes. So I was relating comparison and contrast. And she came back to me a few minutes later. So what's your title? And I said, sometimes you have to take a drastic step to turn your life around. And that is when drastic was born. And then when I started thinking on that and met it, everything in my life up to that point, had been drastic, like having gastric bypass surgery, moving to Florida from Texas to be a financial advisor, having the rug pulled out from under me, driving 36,000 miles my first year to make it happen. So, and then since then, buying NIA franchise, the pandemic, being able to expand my uh, franchise globally. So everything I am in my life is drastic and I teach my clients to get out of their head, get into their heart and get drastic because if they don't, nobody's successful inside their comfort zone. Nobody, nobody has built anything inside their comfort zone. Why you think you can? Get out of here. I don't like networking. Practice, get over it. Unless you're gonna cold call knock on doors and I'm Jehovah's Witness and I ain't knocking on doors for and I drastic. I'll knock on doors for him, but not for me. If you're not gonna do any of those other things, you gotta get drastic about something. Why not networking? No, I love that. And I just challenge the audience to think about that. What are you willing to get drastic about? You know, I know we got a lot of successful folks listening, but you're in business for a reason, right? You haven't stopped or retired or done all those things for a reason. So what are you willing to get drastic about? Um, and I, I want people to really think about that because that's a great point, uh, Tony. You know, you've gone through so many things and, you know, you're amazing in so many ways because of it. But you also always find something else to keep elevating for. And it's like that, that to me, that's the key. Like your why, you know, is it changes and you just elevate each way. So you I love that. Are, you said a mouthful. I'm always going to be drastic. And just when you take that drastic step and you hit this goal, guess what? You're setting the next drastic step. So can I tell you what my next drastic step is? Absolutely. Well, Miss Beyonce is not the only one going on tour this year. I am. And so I'm going to two countries, eight cities. I'm taking the viral networking conference on tour. Wow. <laughs> two countries, eight cities. When is this? When is this? Go ahead and let us know. When is this? Okay. So the first city, uh, country is this month. I'm going to Toronto and I'm speaking in Toronto. And then uh, May, I have three cities, DMV, Baltimore, and um, Tampa. June is Minneapolis. July is Nairobi, Africa, and Charlotte, North Carolina. August is Phoenix and Houston. I'm at the Power Networking Conference again this year. And then uh, uh, Dallas is in September and October. It culminates with my three-day conference, the Viral Networking Conference here in Houston. 
Wow. And just to let y'all know, this is recorded in April. So make sure y'all catch those dates. Rewind this, listen to the dates, and catch it when Tony is going on tour. That is huge, Tony. Congratulations on that. You are definitely taking drastic action. That is and so drastic. You're going to get drastic results. So if you know people in those cities, please send them to my website, which is BNC Viral Networking Conference 2023.com. They can check out all the information. And I would love for the audience to come to the big conference in October. Every, every single person at my conference leaves with appointments. Love that. I love that. And I can attest, I already know how Tony operates. So make sure y'all go to that website and get your tickets. You do not want to miss it. Whatever month you're hearing this on, go get it and just go because Tony's going to have something new anyway. So just hit her up, connect with her. I guarantee you, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to want to miss that. All right. So we 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 winded down, Tony. We got so much to talk about. I know I can talk to you for hours, but I know you got other things to do because you're making moves. Um, <laughs> so what are the groups that, you know, maybe listening to this and they're like, you know what? I just, I, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. What do you tell that. introverts? How do you help them network? So I was going to say introverts is the first group. Most introverts hire me. That's so interesting. The people who hire me are the people who are direct opposite personality of me, which sometimes is a challenge for me, but I'm up for it. Um, and so I have come to realize, I don't know if this is my age. I wouldn't call myself an introvert, but I'm definitely, when I go into big rooms, I get uncomfortable too. So the first thing I need you to know is that I can relate. I can relate. Second thing is, I tell my introverts all the time, don't make let all of us extroverts make all the money. I don't know. I So here's a couple of tips. One, it's quality over quantity. Don't try to meet everybody in the room. Set a goal. Know how many people you want to leave with appointments make that go and you can leave if you want to right so that's the first thing second thing is phone a friend you know i love who wants to be a millionaire and we all want to be a millionaire in our business so why not use a lifeline phone a friend and phone that extrovert friend invite them to go with you phone the well-connected friend invite them to go with you or ask them where they going next and can i come with you so you're not going alone. Um, the third thing is be intentional. Be intentional. Know who you're looking for and know who you are, um, who you want to help as well. So take all the attention off of you, introverts. It's not about you. Your business isn't about you. And you're in your head about how you feel and how uncomfortable you are. And this ain't about you. Your business is not about you. It's about the people you're meant to serve. And if you're in your head being uncomfortable and I don't like it, then you're not going to serve the people you're meant to serve. So get over it and get out there and get a coach who's going to drag you with her and get a coach that connects. That's me because then the door opening is so much easier for you, Andrew. Absolutely. Great, great tips, Tony. Like get someone that to, to help you out. You know, you don't got to do it all on your own. And I like that having a KPI, you know, that you set. So you say, okay, I want to hit five people. I get those five people. Then you get out. Next thing you know, you're staying longer because you realize that you get more comfortable as you do it. Right. Then you can go recharge later after you on, you know, got a couple of money, you know, connections that may lead to some dollar signs. <laughs> so. Absolutely. I love it. So, you know, you are the own, you mentioned this earlier, you are the owner of Network Connection Global Partners. How does an organization such as yours, you know, help its members? Yes. So we are a intentional referral network. There are over a hundred franchisees like myself who are, who bought into the franchise to help y'all grow. Okay. So I need to let that sit for a minute. We paid a lot of money to buy a franchise to help business owners grow. You think we want to let you fail? So it's an intentional referral networking group where people join 
to help you bring you referrals. They are committed to helping you re bring referrals. And by extension, you're going to get referrals because you're on the receiving end of somebody else's helping people. And so NIA um, was, came into my life, and there's a longer story I can't tell today, but it changed my life. And so here's a great example, and you'll love this story. So Network in Action, one of the tenants is community service, and that's how we're different. It is required that we do community service, and I'm proud to say I won the 2022 Franchisee Community Service Award. And so I'm super grateful for that. I do work with the Prison Entrepreneurship Program. And when the prison, entre I go in and we, they do pitch competitions and we judge them and give them um, critiques and things like that. Well, one of the guys came out and when they come out, they go into a transitional home. So I went and took them dinner one night, me and two other members of NIA. And during the conversation, it came out that we're Jehovah's Witnesses. And they, one of the guys said, oh my gosh, I, I grew up a witness. Long story short, I hooked him up with the Bible study conductor. He's now studying, and that's life transformational, right? But that's not where the story ends. He reaches out to me, and he says, Tony, I want to be a pastry chef. I was a cook in, the, in prison. I want to be a pastry chef. But I have two members that own shop, uh, bakeries. He didn't know that. I introduced him to one of the owners and he started working for her this past Saturday. That is, that's amazing. I mean, you're, you're literally changing lives, Tony, with what you do. I mean, that, if that's not an example of why, you know, Network and Action Global Partners exist, I don't know what is. I mean, <laughs> he I got her really and changed him his life, took him out of prison and, and gave him a, a, an opportunity in multiple ways. I got another one, came out of prison. He is now, his goal was to speak. He said, I've been trying to get this off the ground for four years. He now, they are, they filmed, he met somebody through NIA members. A visitor came to NIA. Somebody had a one-to-one -one with the visitor, introduced him to her. She introduced him to a documentary producer. They filmed his documentary last week and y'all are sleeping on being in my network. Shame on you. And he ain't got no money. They love this story so much. They like, we just going to figure out the money later. They started filming his documentary last week. I love that. I love that. Yes. Make sure y'all go hit up Tony's <laughs> Network Connection Global Partners. Um, I myself, I need to hit up Tony's Network and Action Global Partners. So um, she's right up the street for me. So I really have no excuse. So next time y'all hear me on this podcast, make sure y'all put in the comments, did I join? You got to join. You got to come visit. We have a meeting today. I have a national meeting. Okay. I know it's going to air. So it's the second Monday of the month, second Wednesday of the month, virtually. So you can be anywhere to join that meeting and second Thursday, the Monday and Thursday are local to Houston. And then I have six leaders around the country building virtual groups. So we got a place for you. You just got to show up. The first thing you got to do is be in the room where it happens. I love that. So, well, Tony, thank you for that. And we'll definitely get that, get that. You got to connect. There's no really reason why not to, right? She's around the world. She's global. So no matter where you are, no matter where you're listening from, Go ahead and connect with Tony Harris Taylor on Network in Action, right? Um, so, Tony, we have three questions that we ask every guest on our By Design segment. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. The first question What has been the hardest part about designing a life and business you don't need a vacation from? Ah, I love that because I'm never on vacation, I'm always working and I love working, doing what I do. I have so much fun. So the hardest part though, is sometimes I want it more for my members than they want it for themselves. They don't show up. My, I mean, I have a top third, a middle third and a bottom third and the bottom third won't show up. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And so the hardest part is getting them to relate to networking and really understanding the power of it and getting out of their head. And so I can't do it for them, 
I can guide them, I can put them in the room, but I can't do it for them. And that's the hardest part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can concur with that, right? You, you give them all the tools and all the jewels, but they got to do the work. Uh, I definitely can resonate with that one. Thank you. Uh, number two. Number two is what is the best lesson you've learned from your entrepreneurial journey? Oh, I have so many lessons. I'm so much older than you guys. Most of you all probably listening to this. So hear me well, and I'm going to give you my big sister lessons. Number one, show up. Show up when you don't feel like it. Show up when you don't know why. Show up when you get that extra nudge. That's not an accident. And I'm talking about the spiritual nudge. Show up where the connectors are. Number two, book dates on the spot. Book dates. If I had learned this lesson so much earlier, it would have changed my life faster. So book dates on the spot. And the third one is hire a coach. Hire a coach. And all three of those are drastic. So the umbrella is always be drastic. Hire a coach and pay. Stretch to pay. Not a comfortable pay. If it's a comfortable pay, then it's not enough. Find the coach. You have to stretch to pay because you will do the work. People at pay at a certain level, play at a certain level. And if it was too easy for you to pay, you're not, you're going to blow it all. Mm, I love that. Yeah. You got to remember, you know, that's an investment. Ask, you know, instead of saying what's the cost, what's the investment? Because that is an investment in you and the ROI for a good coach worth their salt. The ROI is going to be exponential. Absolutely. Right? I just like to tell people that like, you came Absolutely. to me for a reason. What is your reason? And then what is that worth to you? I can't put a price on it. I can't put a value to it. But clearly you think it's worth it to get on a call, right? So, Absolutely. So I, I love that. Uh, the third question, what are three tools or tips? You've given a lot already, but what are three tools and tips that you'd recommend when scaling your business? So number one is, I know it's going to sound cliche because I'm a networking coach, but you've got to build your network before you need them. So that's the tip. You know, I have done eight events without spending my own money. And someone asked me on Friday, how does somebody get sponsorships? My answer is always going to be networking. Concentrate on building relationships before you need them. So when you need them, they are there. Number two, tools. Um, use some sort of CRM email marketing, text message marketing. How do you stay social media? I cannot believe it. And I know you have this because you're in the digital space. People still don't like social media. Get over it. Get over it. It is not going away. It may change, but it ain't going away. So please, y'all, use social media to build relationships that turn to money. Take those social media relationships offline, get them on a Zoom call, learn who they are, what are you working on, how can I help and mean it. And then uh, email marketing, so critical. Why Javon is getting people years later, I get them all the time too, because I'm staying connected to them using, social, uh, using email. And then lastly, when it comes to tools, the best tool, easiest tool is a calendar link. The easiest way to get people on your calendar is to have a link, schedule it on the spot. I open my app, schedule it. They get the immediate notification and all the reminders. So those are my tools. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. And on social media, change your mindset, man. It's business media. Like you're on there to make some money, right? So ultimately, that's the goal. So just look at it as like, this is one of my things I need to do to grow my business, right? It's just as important. It's a part of your marketing, it's a part of your sales, and it's a part of your biz dev. The three activities that every business owner needs to be investing right. time and money in, right? So it's that simple. So thank you so much, Tony. Uh, you've given a, a ton of value, right? <laughs> so I know people are going to have to listen to this over and over again, because who thought that networking was this involved? Yeah. So the middle word, work, it is work. But it, all prospecting is work. 
Don't think people just gonna be knocking on your door and listen to Jehovah's Witnesses to bring you something. <laughs> I'm selling solar panels. I don't have so many people selling solar panels coming to my house. <laughs> so otherwise, you got to get yourself out there, and you got to take you out the equation. Show up, be up, follow up, and I guarantee you it will blow up. Now, one more note, nugget on that. It's seed planting. You can't get fruit from a seed today. Plant a seed today and expect to get fruit tomorrow. It don't work like that. So you have to start before you need them and start now. I love that. Tony, how can people connect with you if they want to show up, be up? Uh, what, what was the follow-up to blow up? <laughs> Meet with TonyHarrisTaylor.com or TonyHarrisTaylor.com. You'll find me on, and if you Google me, about 10 pages of content will come up. You can find me everywhere. So meet with TonyHarrisTaylor.com. I love that. You you definitely can. She is omnipresent to the truest sense. So thank you so much, Tony Harris Taylor. You've given a lot of value and I look forward to that viral networking conference. Uh, yeah, just make sure y'all connect with her. Peace and blessings. Keep ascending. Bye. Design Your Life and Business, the podcast for leaders, is brought to you by Bright Mind Consulting Group. To find out more about Bright Mind Consulting Group and how you can become the best leader possible, visit brightmindconsultinggroup.com. Make sure you search for Design Your Life and Business on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Bright Mind Consulting Group, we cannot thank you enough for listening. 